What does acquiring a billion users teach you about retention? Hello and welcome to Retention Masterclass. My name is John Kutsir. And my name is Peggy Ann Saltz and we're your co-hosts as always for the show. So Pixar is a true global phenomenon. It's in the top 0.1% of apps. In terms of installs, it's hugely popular, and people have used it to create and share over 100 million pictures and images. And of course, before you get to that number, which is phenomenal, John, it's a, it's a new milestone. This is like hot off the presses for us here, right? But before you get there, you have to have a value proposition that people appreciate. You have to have a solid funnel and you have to have a user experience that delivers. So we've got all three in one person because we have Jeff Roberto, VP of Growth Marketing at Pixar. We're gonna learn about how Pixar got to that billion, how it became a serious player with some serious staying power. And that's actually one of the most interesting things for me. I mean, you know, this is this is mobile, right? Um, you, you see mm -hmm. apps pop up and go huge uh, overnight and disappear quite regularly, right? But Pixar is now seven, maybe eight years old with 150 yeah. million regular active users and still growing. It's very impressive. It is. And we're going to find out about that because that's the thing. You know, it's one thing to get those downloads, but hey, that's why we're here, John, right? It's not an acquisition, it's about keeping them growing. So, Jeff, welcome to Retention Masterclass. Thanks Great for having me. Yes, thanks for having me. Hi, John. Hi, Peggy. Great to be here. It is wonderful. We're super happy to have you. Let's start off with the highlight reel uh, because guess what? There are one or two people on the planet who haven't heard about Pixar yet. Uh, sure. Talk about the recent highlights. Yeah, sure. So, uh, we recently hit 1 billion downloads to date. Company is just over eight years old. Uh, and growth is accelerating. So, you know, to break that down, that's that's over 20 million new installs or new users every 30 days now. Um, so that's you know that's fantastic, and we're 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 doing a lot to keep that on on track. Uh, Pixar was also a top 20 most downloaded app worldwide in Q2 of this year, um, and also Q1 of this year. We we're kind of maintaining that status now as a top as a top 20 most downloaded app. Um, additionally, in, in 2019, Pixar was a number was the number four top grossing photo and video app worldwide. Um, so not only are we driving driving users, we're we're starting to to pick up steam on on monetization. Very so, very interesting. Go ahead, Peggy. I'm I'm blown away by it. You know, I mean, it's it's uh, it's some amazing numbers. I'm just wondering about the numbers as well in these times. I always have to put that like in quotes, you know, in these times, but most companies have an avalanche of organics in these times. Um, I don't know how it is over at your end, you know, you're hyper-focused on retention. So obviously that's uh, not so much focus on acquisition. So what happened to the spend? Is it one of those things where UA is on hold, we're gonna look at deep in the funnel or what's going on over there? Sure, uh, we're very much still spending. Of course, I think like most most companies in our space, we we kind of took a breath, took a pause, looked around mm -hmm. a bit. Like, what's what's next? How do we approach this new scenario, this new world we're living in? Um, but we're very much still spending. The um, you know the great thing about Pixar is roughly ninety to ninety five percent of our of our um, new user growth is organic, right? So that that five to ten percent we are we are spending on. We're doing that very uh, very selectively um, using segmentation. Right. So we and we are chasing revenue because obviously, you know, we don't we don't have a growth challenge. Um, but so when it comes to spending, it's all about ROAS. It's all about ROI. How fast can we get get that payback? We've actually seen that accelerate here in COVID times. Um, not only have we seen overall platform growth um, and increases in not only new users, but editing activity and engagement, but we're also seeing an increase in monetization. So um, spend is very much alive and well. I would just say we're being a little more cautious with you know how we navigate that path that path forward. That's really impressive. I mean, like we've seen a lot of growth in terms of number of users during COVID nineteen. Not every app, especially the ones that are not in gaming, are all seeing growth and monetization. Yeah. Let's talk about magic. Um, all really successful apps 
have got some core of magic, right? Some key moment that maybe defines their value, crystallizes their appeal. Uh, maybe one for Uber. Uh, when we were interviewing Rory Sutherland uh, probably about a month ago for this same podcast, he was mm -hmm. saying it was, you know, watching the car approach, right? You can yeah. see where your cab, your old fashioned cab was coming, right? What's the magic moment in Pixar? It's really about editing. So we've, we've built a platform that has tools very powerful, mobile first, mobile friendly tools, uh, community, 150 million plus monthly actives, and content, and content's accelerating as well. Uh, we're seeing nearly 1 billion edits every month, 1 billion edits. So that's, oh, that's a lot of content. Now, of course, not, not all of that is shared publicly. Um, you know, a lot of people use Pixar for personal use or for friend to friend or one-to-one -one conversational use. Um, so not all of that's out on the platform but um, there's a lot of editing activity happening there. So for, for us, it's really about, in terms of that magic moment, it's about building up to that first edit and that editing experience. We're hyper-focused mm -hmm. on a network of creators and getting people to engage, edit, share, remix, essentially editing other, other people's assets and, and images on the network. Um, so everything before that is, is kind of the lead up, right? It's mm -hmm. not just about installs and it's not just about consuming or viewing content it's about engaging and editing and creating very impressive so it sounds like this you know this like this massive thing almost like you know glastonbury meets <laughs> meets uh, you know stuff to make and stuff to create and stuff to share i mean um i i know that you had some examples i don't know if mm -hmm. you wanted to to get into that because the yeah. whole idea is not just the, what's fascinating here is it's not just the creation there's like this education sharing thing it's not like i did this like some networks you know it's like i did this and you just show it and it goes viral because everyone says hey isn't that cool it's like in yours it's about engaging and increasing retention because I'm going to learn how that cool thing was made. Yes. You know? and so we, I'm going to stick around for the chase, right? Yes. And in, in 2019, we made a big investment in a new product. It's really a new, a new creation flow. It's called Replay. Mm -hmm. and what Replay is, it's, it's edit history and it answers the question, how did you do that? How did because, you do that? Yeah. Because you know, for the first number of years of the business, right? Pixar grew word of mouth grew virally, grew on social media, it still does today. And, and a common question in the comments on social networks was, you know, how did you do that? That's awesome, how'd you do it? Mm -hmm. And we didn't, we didn't really have a good answer from the product perspective to, to address that. And then over time we built Replay, which is essentially edit history showing you the steps someone else took to get to that end result. And each step is editable or or can be borrowed by somebody else. So you can come in and uh, engage in a replay, right? And in a couple taps, recreate what someone else already created and, you know, go off and share that. Or you can engage further and decide, you know, you want to keep steps one and two, but you want to edit steps three and four. And we give you that opportunity and this is all happening on mobile. And so replay mm -hmm. is becoming for us a big retention driver. Not only is an engagement, but it also is keeping people coming back to see, you know, what new replays are on the network and, you know, what, 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 what can I create today? Like I'm looking mm -hmm. to create something cool. And we've enabled every user on the network to create their own replays. So mm -hmm. you and I can go on and decide once we finish an edit, whether or not we want to share that as a replay and let others borrow those steps. That is so cool. I, I, I love those videos. Um, yes, I do use TikTok occasionally. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> we're, big, we're, big we know. we're big fans of TikTok. In fact, um, there, there's a lot of synergy between Pixar and TikTok. I've noticed. I've noticed. And that's where I was going, actually, because mm -hmm. on, on TikTok, you'll occasionally see this video of somebody, how I made an edit of, a, of an image. And I'm wondering if some of those or many of those are coming yeah. from Pixar. They are. They are. In fact, we, we recently had our first viral um, Pixar hit, which is a, is a new editing trend called Golden Hour. And the concept is you, know, you have all these selfies, you have all these great images of you and your friends, and you want to overlay um, kind of a shadow mask or a light, a light filter that could be, you know, a window or, um, you know, some, some sort of shadow like a tree or something, right? And you, you wanna kind of project that you're actually maybe not at home, you're on a beach or you're, 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 you're out somewhere. And that's what this golden hour trend and, uh, and editing kind of style allows you to do. 
And so we created a few videos, of course, tutorial style, and, and loaded those on TikTok on our on our um, on our Pixar TikTok account. And and a couple of them now are uh, up into the millions of views. In fact, in total, I think it's over five million right now. So um, just goes to show, yes, the right trend, the right platform come okay. together. People looking to uh, get more creative at home don't necessarily have you know the uh, the exposure to the outside world, and they're they're using our our app to kind of explore and do cool things. Cool. I want to get to the cool stuff. I got to do that, right? The cool trends are coming, John. Uh, but you know, this is doing amazing things to your sessions. You know, we're talking about frequent sessions, long sessions, um, interactive sessions. You know, it's 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 just really blowing some of the metrics right out of the water. Maybe even making some. Uh, I wouldn't say rethink of the benchmark, you know, because maybe they're bogus. Mm -hmm. I won't go there, but you know, right. it's it's doing something. It's doing something to your metrics. So I want to understand just at that level, what are you looking at then? How do you know, you know, this is this is this is the one. This is the way to do it. This is the path that's getting me to retention growth. Yeah. So again, it, it's really about editing for us. So we're 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 very focused on you know making sure new users and that first user experience mm -hmm. leads to a successful edit. Mm -hmm. And um, th you know, tools and 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 process is easy, and that's why you know, replay kind of lowers the bar, right? It it just allows you to create faster, better stuff, quicker, right? And uh, in doing that, we've seen an increase in retention. Of course, we're looking at a whole host of metrics. I mean, we're looking at our our um, our uh, down mal ratios. We're looking at our 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 weekly to 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 uh, monthly ratios. Um, but really, it's it's that it's that edit experience, and of those people editing, how likely are they to retain, and are they retaining at a faster clip than people coming in just mm -hmm. to browse and, and consume content? You know what's super interesting? What you said about you know, you're lowering the bar, and that's absolutely correct, right? You're lowering the bar for people to be able to do cool stuff. So you're actually raising the bar in mm -hmm. what you're able to do, but right. you're lowering the bar in the cost or the effort required to do it. Um, yes, that's a winning combination. Yes, and and education is a big part of the platform. In fact, um, you know we're investing more now than ever before in terms of tutorial creation. Uh, as we mm -hmm. were talking about TikTok, you know, uh, editorials or tutorials um, that really teach people how to do something, um, and then give them the fast track to do that. That is very cool. I mean, I have to just say as an, as an aside, you know, I love it when we have a platform that empowers people rather than just sort of give it to them. So this gives them tools, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, it really resonates. But of course, if you don't hit the nail on the head, if you don't strike a chord, it's not going to work out. So there's something in the background to figure out, you know, this way of editing, this tool, this, this approach is the, is the cool one. And, yeah. uh, you know, you can use AI, you can use common sense, you can use a lot of different ways to get there. You're obviously doing something that keeps it fresh. What are you doing to stay cool, Jeff? And that's a question right there. <laughs> from, 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 a, from a business and platform form perspective, we're, you know, we're very focused on data, right? So we're, and we're very focused on segmentation and uh, we're spending a lot of time on research, right? So understanding the key use cases, the, and not only the use cases, but the jobs like the things people are actually needing to get done with, with our tool set. And we cover so many use cases. We cover kind of the selfie editors or the quick edits. You just want to make something cool. For Instagram, we cover the, um, the, uh, the celebration of passion or fan art, right? So um, fans coming in to uh, make really cool content for artists they love or organizations mm -hmm. they support. Uh, we cover the small business or prosumer case. You need social media, you know, ads, content, uh, you want to build your brand on on the web tools to do that, and then of course we cover the 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 more pro case or the um, you know professional artist case, the photographers, the illustrators, uh, folks that really just want to push the boundaries on creativity, right? So mm -hmm. all that said, yes, we are then looking at each of those groups and building kind of an experience for them. And you know, if you're obviously if you're a professional photographer, replay may not be your go-to. You want to get right into the do-it-yourself advanced editing tools. Um, mm -hmm. And that's fine. And we have a track for that. Um, but mm -hmm. if you're new, you're new to Pixar and you just really want to make, you know, one of the pictures you took this weekend look cool for a post today, Replay can help you do that. Very, very cool. Can you share some examples? Maybe uh, share your screen, walk us through a couple. Yeah. Let me share my screen here. Awesome. Just gonna <clears throat> unlock the inner artist in us, John. 
<laughs> can you exactly. can you see that? Yes, we can. Okay, so this is a recent trend called drip art or dripping effect. And we realized this trend happening uh, a couple of months ago and it was, it, it originated in Southeast Asia actually, um, and then started making its way across the globe. And what, what's happening here is people are taking selfies, they're applying some effects, some filters, and then they're also applying something kind of unique to Pixar, uh, which is um, this a sticker mask or essentially overlaying a sticker that makes it look like your selfie or yourself mm -hmm. is dripping like paint. And I'll, I'll play the tutorial here in a sec, but you'll see how one goes from, you know, usual kind of regular selfie to something super cool that they would want to share on social media. Ooh. So they're cutting out themselves. They've removed the background. They're adding effects. Finding a drip sticker to overlay. Changing the color, reversing the, the the color there, yeah. So it matches the backgrounds. Finding additional stickers to put in the backgrounds. And all this is available via replay, right? So you could actually grab and sort of use this yourself. It is. It is. Yes. In fact, this is one of our best performing replays here <laughs> in terms of mm -hmm. engagement. <laughs> Wow, I would replay that. Yep. Yeah. And so there you go. Then you share it, you know, share it to social. You can share it to PixArts, save it to your device. I message it to a friend. That is amazing. That is and cool. It's all, it's all pretty simple to do. Now, that of course, really that amazing. that person went through um, went through all the editing steps themselves, and that tutorial replay makes makes that you know attainable in a in a few taps. That mm -hmm. is really, really, is. really cool. I, uh, y y you may get another download of Pixar pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it makes can, it look so simple. I need to do that. You I won't look as good as the person who did it, but you know, right. I, I'll, I'll try. <laughs> well, you know, to see that. To be fair, with 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 um, yeah, if you're if you're using someone else's steps uh, there, it's 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 quite it's quite easy to do. I'm looking forward to that. I'm going to try yeah. that. So in yeah. fact, um, one more point on that. There was actually, when that trend broke, there was a big dispute on social media between kind of the purists that use, you know, higher end desktop um, editing tools, like, so, you know, downloadable software for, for, for desktop. Yes. Um, and of course you can create that in software like that, but then you have, you know, here uh, mobile replays where you can do it in a few taps. So there's a big, mm. big, big kind of debate over, you know, no, you, you know, you, you need to be using these types of tools to create those sorts of edits. And you know, the, 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 uh, the kids on social media aren't, aren't having it. They just want to get it done. No, no, I'm I'm with the kids on this one. I'll take yep. the easy route. You know, I'm, I'm not carrying all the bits over to your computer for the video of me to go to you. And you carry right, it. Right. <laughs> I'll take technology. Thank you very much. But what you've actually shown us here and, and, and with the going viral that kind of proves it, a lot of what builds into your success is trend spotting, finding the yes. right trends and, and jumping on those, or at least building the right technology so that people can jump on and create trends on your platform. Do you have some advice for other growth marketers about how to spot the right trends and to take advantage of them? Yeah, I mean, it's it's there, there's no right answer to this and we're, we're using a kind of a, a custom combo of, of, of people tools, software, and process. And uh, to be fair, it took us a while to uh, kind of perfect that in terms of how we spot and react. Um, but that is very much part of our strategy today. So um, so we'll use, of course, our, our social media teams on the front lines, and they're constantly testing and posting and understanding like what types of visual elements, tools, um, tutorials get engagement, right? And so we do a lot of kind of testing that way and understanding. And then once we kind of, un you know, understand, we'll, we'll, we'll go deeper in, in mm -hmm. a direction. The challenge always is, you know, at, uh, trends are going to happen organically on social media. They're going to come 
you know, from any direction at any time and can be anything. And so Mm -hmm. um, while we may think that we can create trends and we have Mm -hmm. created a few, um, the reality is, you know, social media at large is going to Mm -hmm. create them. And it's up to us to kind of understand where they're, you know, where they're happening and how fast they're moving. And so for that, Mm -hmm. we're using, we're using social listening tools. Um, We're using, of course, the, um, the best in class app analytic tools, third party tools um, to look at our, you know, our rank, our downloads um, and our actives by country, by platform. Cause that's usually an indicator like, oh, something's happening here. We saw a spike in downloads in this country. Uh, mm-hmm. Let's go dig into that a bit. Let's go look on social channels in, in that language, right? And so we'll, we'll, we'll do that and kind of understand what it is. Once, once we find what it is, then we will react and we'll put a, you know, kind of a full, a full um, plan in place, which mm-hmm. includes creating the replay, launching a tutorial, um, featuring content, you know, push, cool. email, et cetera, et cetera, right? So we'll build a full, a full kind of a campaign around that, around that trend. And some of these last just a couple of days, others last months. <laughs> and the challenge we always have is typically, well, although things have changed in COVID times, but typically they break on a weekend, right? And typically it's like a Saturday or Saturday night. So <laughs> not, everyone's board, kind yes. of in, not everyone's in front of their, um, you know, in front of their computer ready to react to these things on the team. So, um, you know, we are monitoring and um, we react as quickly as we can. And uh, most of the time, this it, it actually works well. And, you know, what I tell people is you can't really buy your way to the top of the app stores. You know, when you see that kind of movement, it's trend driven. So it's either mm-hmm. like a new feature that goes viral. It's a trend. It's something that's taking that app out of its normal cycle, even out, outside of a budget. Uh, right. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. we look for those signals and then we, we, react, we react to them. I love what I'm hearing here because it's really about watching the signals. You know, you're watching indicators, you're watching metrics to see if I've got my magic moment in your app. You know, am I editing? You know, it's watching all of this. But then you're a company, I mean, you're hit, you know, you've hit some incredible milestones. A billion is not an easy one to hit. So obviously, there's something that also tells you, you know, when are you on the right track as a company? You know, how are you building that? growth loop as it were, or, mm-hmm. or what, whatever, because something's happening out there. You know, what do you watch or monitor to say, yeah, I need to dial up on this one. I need to leverage this because it's obviously working. I mean, app store rankings, that's an easy one. That's one to watch, but certainly not the only one. Yeah. I mean, we're looking at a variety of things. It's, it's ranking and we're looking mm-hmm. at that by country and platform. It's downloads. You know, those spikes really tell us if there's something hot or trendy happening. Um, it's weekly actives, right? We're we're very much um, kind of a, a weekly cycle kind of business, and this obviously, of course, differs mm. for, for for every company out there. But you know, when you think about it, people are investing time in Pixar. It's not just a fleeting, uh, unique. It's not just a quick, you know, come in for a few minutes just to catch up and and uh, consume some content. People are investing time. They're editing, um, and so we look we look at a lot of things on a weekly basis, and that's kind of, kind of how we measure. The success of the business. Of course, we are looking at things like ARPU and revenue. Um, how mm-hmm. well are we doing in a country on a revenue basis? Um, and then we're also looking at retention in a big way, both new user and um, su- subscriber retention or revenue retention. Mm-hmm. It's really a combo of all those of all those things. I want to just interject something for a moment because you know weekly active. Now that's a different one. So now your retention curve, your retention, you know your your natural retention um, cycle. Is mm-hmm. what is is a seven day? You, you've yeah. compressed everything the, we talk about here down to that week. Right? The, the challenge, the challenge with monthly in in a business like ours, and I guess you know most most social and um, kind of entertainment apps is, you know, by the time you see uh, a trend or a signal, it's it's probably too late. Um, mm. And and you, you know you 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 do need to measure yourself on how well you're doing against the week before, <laughs> um, versus the month before. Uh, otherwise, I think you fall into a, you know, a bit of a strange zone in terms of like, can you really manage the business forward? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I mean, especially if you're talking about kids, a month is an eternity, right? Yeah, and, totally. So, uh, and it's not just obviously teens who are using your app; it's many others as well. But yeah. uh, certainly for those, uh, certainly for social, if it's not weekly active, I mean, you know, yeah. it, it's it's gone, it's out. Yeah. Um, Let's and daily, I would say social, you know, arguably social is looking is, is you know, the, the major socials are, are, are measuring their business on, on a DAU basis yeah. um, very aggressively. Uh, I think, well, you know, we, we eventually get there. I think right now kind of, you know, we're in this we're in this weekly cycle. And it's working well for us. Yeah, 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 absolutely. 
So let's talk about retention and re-engagement. Uh, mm -hmm. What channels are you using right now for bringing people back into the app? Um, and as you're using those channels, what kind of CTAs do you use and what really works? Sure. I mean, it's 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 a combo of things. We made a big investment in lifecycle marketing very early on. Um, so that enables us, of course, to uh, send push notifications, in-app messaging, email, um, and build custom journeys or essentially canvases that people follow, right? And or paths that people follow, and we can we can alter those based on you know um, who you are, the the segment you fall into, or kind of your editing style. Um, so that's that's a big one, lifecycle marketing, or, or and, and all those channels combined. Um, two, I would say is um, you know, paid user acquisition and retargeting. Given you know 150 million monthly actives, there's always going to be a long tail of folks outside of that monthly number um, mm -hmm. that are maybe 60 day actives or 90 day actives, right? That we can go mm -hmm. and address and kind of bring them closer to that, you know, monthly and then of course weekly, weekly cycle. Um, so retargeting is a big, a big, a big play for us. Uh, I also, I would also say um, app store optimization. We've invested a lot there. We're in 30 plus languages. And of course with that comes, you know, and two platforms now three windows. So we're windows, iOS and, and Android uh, with that comes, you know, lots of storefronts to manage in lots of languages. And, you know, you, you don't want to present yourself the same way <clears throat> in every country and every language. So we're, we're very focused on, um, you know, putting putting kind of the right content, the content that's most likely to drive trends in that country or stuff that's already hot in that country or, for the, or in that language, um, and optimizing storefronts. So let's mm -hmm. just ping in on that for half a second um, before you continue your answer there, because what you're saying is that you're basically updating your app store description fairly frequently with, uh, with trends. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I would say on a, on, a, on a regular basis, yes. I mean, it's not every not every app update, but um, mm -hmm. we are we are doing a lot of experimentation and, and learning. And that's, you know, of course, a, a, a contributor in, in the organic, the organic uh, growth. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. And in terms of those channels that you're using for um, uh, not just retargeting, but just re-engagement, uh, mm -hmm. what do you find most effective? I, I would say it's a mix. Um, I mean, we're, 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 we're spending and testing on kind of all the, all, all the usual suspects in, in, in mobile uh, ads today. So, so it's, it's, it's kind of a combo there. Yeah. Cool. Cool. I think, you know, mm -hmm. Facebook gives a lot of, a lot of customization in terms of what you can do. Um, yeah. to find folks that have, have been in your app and have maybe uh, participated in a particular challenge or engaged with certain types of content or like a certain, you know, hashtag or following a certain hashtag, right? So it gives us a lot of flexibility to challenge a lot of that, you know, as we know, that's kind of uh, gonna, gonna start to depreciate here as we enter, enter Q4 yes. with IDFA. Yes, we'll get into that. I didn't, I didn't want to go there, but he went there already. I, I, I have to. I think it's at the you know that that's on 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 the top of my mind and, and many others in this space, yes. and we're all trying to figure out you know what what what's the path forward. Yeah. Well, speaking about pathways and journeys, you know, I mean, this is art, so mm -hmm. there isn't really that massive smart AI algorithm is going to say, you know, you bought that, you need this, you know, you bought mm -hmm. this, this is complimentary, you bought the dip, here's the chips, you know, that sort of thing. Right. This is more like, you've been using these tools, you're doing these types of replays, you might want to be interested in this and that. And you do have to bring that into the messaging, because this is yeah. personal, and this is a matter of taste. Yeah. So I'm just curious, not just the journeys, but how do you personalize them? And maybe even at this level, I would even say individualize them because I want to feel like it's my art, my magic moment. It's all mine. And you understand <laughs> me, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we how, are, how? Yeah, just on the AI point, we, we have made a, a big investment in AI. I mean, we're using it in so many different parts of our business today. Um, so that, that very much is at play in terms of product features, like how edits are made possible on mobile. Um, it's also, you know, very much present in kind of how we manage content and, you know, how we personalize experience. That that definitely is at, is at play. But, um, you know, for us, it's really about, as I said earlier, understanding kind of who you are, uh, what your likely use case is, and building experience that makes sense for you. And how do you, I'm just, curious along these lines as well. It's one thing to personalize, but you also mm -hmm. have to have, you know, there's this trend dynamic. I have to feel that it's urgent. There's a call to action. You know, what is yeah. 
what what is some of that? I mean, even just for that matter, thinking out loud now for the moment, mm -hmm. you know, even the call to action is like edit more stuff. Um, you know, I just <laughs> <laughs> just trying to get my head around well, this. Uh, when, when it comes when it comes to the education or the tutorial element, it's really about try now or learn how, right? Those mm -hmm. those work because you see something cool, and again, it's like how did you you know the question is how did you do that? And we learn how, learn more, try now, right? Those type mm -hmm. those types of awesome. CTAs work really really well. When we're talking about um, like partner activations, and we've done a lot of artist activations. I guess to answer your question, like why come back to PixArt? If I don't yeah. have a need to create something for social today, why should I come back to PixArt today? So one answer to that is uh, working with brands and artists. Mm -hmm. And um, in this lane, we've, you know, we've partnered with, with major names, I mean, folks like Maroon 5, Gwen Stefani, Taylor Swift, Will Smith, Megan Trainer, lots of, you know, A, A list celebrities mm -hmm. and artists. And in those scenarios, we we um, we activate our community and their fan base through creative challenges. So we'll create a challenge, and that challenge could be a few days, a week long. It'll have some parameters, and the mm -hmm. artist or the brand will give us some assets, right? So we're we're able to use those within the challenge, and fans will be invited in within PixArt, and then we'll also go out and, of course, you know, uh, run campaigns on social media and invite those fans in to to participate. And in that case, there is a you know there there's a very clear sense of urgency. Because this mm -hmm. this is an expiring challenge, and if okay. you're you know if you're if you're a super fan, you want to win and you want to show the world that you know you can create something cool and and support your your artist or your you know your brand, and that very much helps to That's... to kind of spin the cycle for for people that don't have yeah. you know that need today to come create something for their you know their personal social. That is so smart if you think about it, because again, it's almost like that gamification on a different level, John, if you totally. think about it, you know, I want, I want to go in because I have to build the fort for my, for my community. That's what I'll do in a game here. I'm back to it. It's like, I want to show my, you know, my undying love for, for a K-pop band or something like that. <laughs> well, I'm going to ask you. Huge yeah. on Pixar. Huge there, on Pixar. There you go. <laughs> I'm not going to try and name one. I'm going to ask you though. Come on, Jeff, your yeah, favorite. Yeah, I would say, <laughs> well, um, yeah, I'm getting I'm getting more into it now. It's it's kind of like co-work yeah, with your pressure. Um, we we just actually launched um, uh, a partnership with it with a band called Twice, a K-pop band called Twice, okay. um, and they're they're a rising kind of a rising star and group in in, in the K-pop world. Um, but I think you know if you look at those fan communities, they're they're you know hyper active and very viral on social, and they will yeah. do whatever it takes to get their artists to trend on Twitter and to make sure. <laughs> their artist gets views on YouTube. In fact, the latest Blackpink video, which came out under a month ago, um, broke three records. I was just reading about this yesterday. Broke three, <laughs> three Guinness World Records. The most views in 24 hours, the most wow. video view, uh, music video views in 24 hours, and um, the most viewed YouTube music video by a K-pop group in 24 hours. Got over 80 million views in 24 hours. Um, that's unheard of. I mean, we, we haven't seen that kind of activity in years past. Wow. Even when, you know, major US wow. artists have, wow. have debuted videos, you don't, you know, you, they didn't get 80 million in a day. But but Jeff, um, so, but Jeff, when we publish this video, I mean, we're going to 100 million in 24 hours. I, I hope hours. so. I'm, I'm I mean, looking forward. Peggy social yeah. network, mine, you your it. name. You I mean, <laughs> we'll forget about twice. <laughs> you have to ta tag it Pixar and, and and also tag it some other K-pop band names there on Twitter, and I guarantee you the views are going to go right up. Every K-pop band, <laughs> yes, everyone. I'm going to do my research, but I, I do have to check this out because you know you talk about your trends, and I mean this is really a, if you dig deeper into what we're talking about here, you know, fun aside, this is a great recipe for retention and growth. Yes. Because yes. it's saying gamify it, get people committed. They love their fan. Okay, let's get them going here. And it's like the best creativity wins. How can you lose? You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then in, in addition to, to challenges, of course, you know, the, the, we we run our own. So not only do we do the branded challenges uh, with partners, mm -hmm. but we run our own our own house kind of Pixar challenges every day, every week. And those so those are constantly running. We've also um, Kind of relaunched our 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 discovery experience in the app, and so now we have a, a page of, of hashtags, and you can follow hashtags, and you know within there you can find anything from types of content to artists you love, and once you follow that, it builds kind of a micro community around that hashtag, and then you're you're editing around that, and of course, you know when when some folks right. are are good at editing and creating replays, and others are just learning how they're following along, and now they're editing against that interest, 
Yeah. Um, and that's, that's a very powerful concept. And that is also a big driver of retention outside of the challenge uh, cycle. Cause some people feel, you know, maybe I'm not good enough or I'm not ready to participate in a challenge. So, you know, participating in a, in a hashtag stream of edits is, a, is maybe a little more inviting for, for new folks. I love, I love just hearing the story. I mean, uh, you've been around the block a few times, you know, seven, eight year old app, not just brand new, uh, but obviously started out as an editing app and becoming social with the challenges. Um, it's really, really impressive. It's amazing. It's kind of, you know, there's a little bit of Instagram in there. There's a little bit of TikTok in there. There's a little bit of other things in there and the social as well. We talked about a lot of successes and you have a lot of them. But um, guess what? Everybody fails. And usually most of us, I don't know, maybe it's only me, fail more than we succeed. What sure. yeah. didn't work um, in your retention marketing efforts? Yeah, the um, the list is long for sure. <laughs> uh, I think, I think you know, we all, we all have these stories. Um, you know, look, what I like to say is we're either winning or learning. We're never losing, right? So, <laughs> so failures, are an opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> failures are an opportunity to learn. I'm a big fan of actually promoting things that aren't working internally because I feel like that, you know, it educates and it, it keeps us kind of on our toes like these, you know, we, we need to we need to watch out for this or, you know, let's let's learn from that experience. Um, so, you know, a few things come to mind. One in particular comes around uh, experimentation and testing. Um, there, there have been, you know, multiple times where we may have like run a test um, but didn't necessarily think through everything, right? And um, and that you know that that could backfire, kind of uh, kind of throw you off course a bit. Um, one interesting one was when we were price testing. Um, one of the major platforms uh, has a has kind of a feature where if you if you change the price, it essentially acts as a new SKU or a new product, and therefore it removes auto renew or the renewable subscription over time oh. from that from that cohort or that group oh. that you're testing against. And that can come back to hurt you, of course, when it's time for those wow. users to um, to renew. And so, you know, once we learned that, they were like, "Oh, wow! Now, now we need to go do more win back marketing to keep that cohort." That was a ten million dollar mistake, potentially. I'm yeah. not putting well, words in your mouth. <laughs> it was not, wow! It was not ten million because when when we're when we're doing these tests, we're, we're we're doing them on you know we're doing them on small groups of users. Good. But it was a you know good good learning and you know something that yeah. you know will will now take forward. Um, you know the other the other uh, example I would give is, you know, if someone is is choosing to um, turn their subscription off, right? There's so many ways, and we see this across the board with so many different apps. How they handle that that scenario? Do you send them an in-app message? Do you send them an email? Do you wait three days? Do you prompt them right before their um, their subscription will end, right? And so we we learned that it's you know there's there's a delicate mix there in terms of messaging and channels. Um, mm -hmm. And it's very important to to message in app and also get to them through other channels because you're reinforcing, mm -hmm. nice. right? And we'll we'll use maybe different messages in in each case. Nice, mm -hmm. nice. You also had one, and I just see it in in our notes here mm -hmm. about showing ads during the first user sessions. Yeah. So this is a delicate balance. I think every every company struggles with this. Um, you know, how do you balance that user experience and monetization? And you know when do you show ads if you're an ad-supported business, which we are, and we also do have subscriptions, of course. But um, you know if you're if you're on the free product, there there are ads in it. How often do we show them? When do we show them? And should they show up in that first user or new user experience? Yeah. And um, you know we, we we learned that you know if you if you remove them or or lessen them in that new user user experience, you know you will see better retention um, because people oh. will get, of course, for us they will get to that editing magic moment faster and not be mm -hmm. distracted. And that's what we're really trying to get to. And that makes a ton of sense. That's I mean, you're point. not, um, uh, you know, a hyper casual game that you need to monetize in the first week or two weeks or your toast, right? So right. that makes a ton of sense. Keep them around a little bit longer. Okay, let's get to the big one. We mentioned it a little earlier. Um, yeah, you brought it up actually, and now we're yes. going to ask the question. Yeah. That's IDFA. We know iOS, iOS 14 is coming, and we know yeah. that basically the IDFA is deprecated. Uh, probably opt-in rates will be under 20%, and my personal guess is probably under 5%, given yeah. the scary message that yeah. Apple's going to throw up there. So talk about how that's going to impact what you do. Yeah, I think from a, as I mentioned earlier, from a retargeting spec perspective, it's, you know, it's going to be a bit challenging to um, to continue on that path. We're 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 going to have to build more of a custom model 
<coughs> using our own internal data. And we'll, we'll have to use kind of signals and components that you know we, we probably haven't used in the past, right? And I think this, you know, I, I think a lot a lot of folks are thinking about this. Like, how do we do, how do we what's the workarounds? Um, and how do we do it with our own data in our own world? Um, so we're very much thinking about this. I don't have the magic answer for everybody. Seriously? Every, I mean, this is why we had, out there. Podcast, <laughs> we had the magic answer. No, the magic <laughs> moment, the magic answer. I thought we were going to pull it I'm off here. <laughs> I, um, I would say, you know, for, for us, it's going to be looking, you know, we're going to, we're, we're going to look very closely at our, at our, um, at our use cases, our segmentation and, um, you know, look for other ways that we can show success or failure on certain campaigns um, outside of kind of all that post install attribution data that we typically get, especially on iOS. I mean, you know, Google, my guess is they'll, they'll follow suit. And so we'll be in a world where we don't really have all of this. However, you know, Apple and Google very much at work on building their own ecosystems even, even more and making that, those experiences even more robust. So I think you know, depending on, uh, you know, kind of where you're spending and, and how you're, um, you're instrumenting this, you still may get some success uh, going direct to those companies. So it's it, hard to say how it's going to play out. Just it yet. is really hard to say. And I recently interviewed Jane Parasini, who uh, used to be at DraftKings. I mean, she's been everywhere, Machines Own. Um, uh, she's now with EA and uh, interviewed her about the IDFA. And she basically said, hey, we're going to take some learnings from Android and port mm -hmm. them over to iOS. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's another way to do it, too. Assuming Android's alive and well with... Uh, with, with all that Google data that for some period of time, right? Exactly. The shoe may drop there too. <laughs> sure, sure. I'm yeah, not, but I'm it's not very, go ahead. No, I was going to say. I mean, it's very much top of mind for us. I mean, good news for Pixar. As I said earlier, we're 90 90 95 percent organic today, so um, it's not like you know we're we're going to stumble. But but we are thinking about this in terms of you know what does this mean for us? Yeah. Moving forward. I want to ping in on the workaround there for a moment, because I've been talking to different marketers out there about this, as we all have, you know, when it hit. And they're saying, well, a couple of things can happen. Um, if you have a good store of data, which you do from all the mm -hmm. years that you've been around, you can start mm -hmm. to go back in that data and you should start to model more with your own data. So go for mm -hmm. your first party data and, and stick to modeling it differently and mm -hmm. thinking and building from that. And I talk to others who say, no, actually what you need to do is you need to get as many other touch points as possible and start to sort of triangulate that. So that means I'm gonna go way into getting emails and I'm gonna even try to get telephone numbers because the more data I have, and we'll sure. see how that one works out, right? Because mm -hmm. uh, now we're really privacy focused. So asking my phone number instead of asking for my opt-in, I don't know if that's going to work, but I won't go there. So that's another way. Get a lot of data and sort of build it together. I'm just curious if you have a view on either one, because those seem to be the two schools of thought of like, what can we do so we're not toast? Yeah, I would... Um... I mean, to be to be fair, I think it's a mix of both. Um, okay. I, I do believe I'm a strong believer in in you know kind of owning the customer experience. You know, having that customer profile, having more information about the customer, direct you know business to customer, so you can really manage that the right way. Um, the challenge with 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 all the all the platforms today is you just don't have that level of detail. You don't have that level of personalization, and so mm -hmm. you're always trying to like optimize for stuff that might be right, but not exactly there. Um, and so e email plays a big role in that, right? I feel like okay. that that's a very smart strategy um, mm -hmm. for growth marketers is to lean more into email and not necessarily just to deliver more campaigns, but really start to understand, um, you know, some behavior around, around email um, and also, you know, start to build that relationship over time, right? So it's not about, you know, can I get, can I get a message to you every week? It's like, okay, we have a relationship and I can reach out to you about certain things along the way when it's time. And you can use email for uh, lookalike marketing, lookalike yeah. audiences, which Correct. you can't uh, use IDFA for anymore. Yeah. 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 Very, okay. very good point. So we got we got a vote there for email. All right. Which yeah. is uh, I'm just trying to get a feel for this because they're going to have to be talking about this more and more as we get closer and closer to September and beyond. Um, so we talk about some challenges. All right. And we got a thought or two here about the workarounds. Talk about opportunities. Let's be positive about this. What do you see on the horizon as being like the next big thing for you at Pixar or maybe just overall for all marketers? Yeah, well, I'll speak to Pixar 
first. Mm -hmm. uh, I mentioned owning, you know, the customer relationship and and and, and building on that. We are um, building on our web business now. So obviously, we we grew up on mobile and have been mobile mm -hmm. first for so many years. Um, we're, we're shifting to web and bringing tools to web and building a full experience there. And with wow. that experience, with that experience, then yes, you know, having that email address, having that customer profile, having that direct relationship is very important. Um, so that's, that's definitely a big, a big focus for us. The other I would say is video, um, mm -hmm. making a big investment in video. In fact, just this morning, we announced the acquisition of a video effects app called D effect. And it's, huh. uh, it's a, uh, of course, um, you know, mobile first, video editing, video effects, mostly used for social media in terms of making videos look really cool, right? So we'll we'll, we'll build on top of that and start to build out um, a bigger video video editing product. We have one today, it's early mm -hmm. days. We're, we're gonna be spending more time on that. Wonderful. That's interesting. I can see there's like a platform because it makes sense. Now you're gonna give me more tools. Um, I'm gonna be in lean back mode right? Because I'm confined at home anyway. So I may as well sit at that big desk and be very uncool in front of that big screen. I, I can I can totally see it. I can totally see that as being a platform, um, even for everyone who has to go to social media. Now I'm reading a lot about, you know, the micro influencers and others mm -hmm. who are going to have to figure this out or small business, you said yourself, yes. small business. So where are they going to go? They're going to either learn from the replays here, or they're going to figure it out themselves. Yeah, and they're spending you know more time on social than ever, ever before because we're we're at home, mm -hmm. less space, less space, more time is what I like to say, right? Yeah. So you're using your your mobile device or your computer to escape or to entertain or to uh, relax, right? And so you're you're uh, engaging in that way, and yes, you're using tools, and 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 we're finding a lot more people are willing and mm -hmm. able to learn learn now, like they have the time to learn new things. Um, mm -hmm. So we we definitely play play into all of that. Really, really interesting. Also super interesting that you're going multi-platform. I mean, every major successful platform pretty much is multi-platform. Um, so that's a big step and, and good to see. Jeff, want to thank you so much uh, for being with us on Retention Masterclass. Thank you so much. It's been a great conversation. It's, it's been awesome, Jeff. I look forward to continuing it because I can imagine it's somewhere down the road. Couldn't you just see it, John? Some sort of like bringing brands together with creators and sort of being the the, the middleman or 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 the connector yeah maybe Absolutely. even jobs who knows we'll have him back he's got he's got something in mind you got it you got to see it in there's, his face <laughs> there, there's more coming for sure keep keep an eye on our website for now i knew Absolutely. it i knew it Absolutely. thanks so much jeff it was amazing to have you here we'll have you back thanks. sometime soon it Thanks was again. amazing, Jeff. Uh, for everybody else, hey, whatever platform you're watching this on or listening to it on, hey, like, subscribe, comment, all the above. If you love the podcast, rate it, review it. That would be a massive help. And time flies. It's a wrap already. Here we are at the end of another show. Of course, until the next one, keep well, stay safe. And this is Peggy Ann Salt signing off for Retention Masterclass. And this is John Kutz here. Have a great day.